Uh, how's it going, Martys? It's your main Marty E-Man here, and today, finally, going to be watching the full video of Doctor Strange vs. Doctor Fate, Marvel vs. DC, a death battle. Got headphones in and they're ready to roll. Art of magic is a perplexing thing. Only those with the right knowledge, talent, and willpower can truly claim to be the most powerful wizards of all. Like Doctor Strange, the Sorcerer Supreme of Marvel Comics. And Doctor Fate, DC's Defender of Cosmic Order. They're both known as, uh, how oh, was it, Sorcerer Supreme. Weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Oh, I thought they would have animated this one a little bit, like the 3D. Dr. Stephen Strange wasn't just any brilliant neurosurgeon, he was the very best. Too bad he was also a prick who cared more about the money he made than the patients he worked on. Since the yeah. patients bring recognition, recognition brings money, and money keeps Wellhaven's doors open. Can't blame him though, when your entire family kicks the bucket one by one like Stevens did, it's kinda hard to get a And he's a vet. Also, money's just great. Strange's founder of the Defenders, wow. Member of Illuminati. His work became more expensive, and his bank account rose into the millions. And then... Yeah. That's what happens when you're an asshole. And drive, kids. Strange survived. God, I have gone. I've been in those situations. Almost been in those situations multiple times. Like, oh, I don't know, surgery. Pretty inconvenient. To find a cure, Strange spent his entire fortune and traveled the globe until he found the Ancient One. He had heard of this man's befuddling mystic healing powers, and at this point, he was up for trying anything. But the old dude refused to cure him. Instead, he offered to teach Strange how to use magic himself and become a superhero. Who needs hands when you have magic? Through his training, okay, Strange yeah, I'll give you that one. Many secrets of the universe, along with plenty of handy spells. He has learned so many charms, jinxes. Okay, got to pause it because we are going through this entire list. So he has bolts of Balthak. Crimson Bands of Sidorak, which are, you know, the whole, like, <laughs> totally sounds like that. Darkness of the Divine Conduit, Flames of the Faltine, Reign of Ragdor, Ragador, Shades of Sephirin, I know I'm mispronouncing all of these, Seven Ring, wait, didn't we just, oh, there's Rain and then there's Seven Rings of Ragador, uh, Vapes of Valtor, Winds of Watum, an invisible shield of everlasting enchantment. So let's learn. Generations, hexes, and incantations that it would be impossible to list them all now, but he certainly has his favorites. Like the nearly unbreakable bands of Sidorak. Unless you're super strong like the Hulk or Thanos, no way you're snapping these chains. He can Onk? He has an Onk of life? Tele wait, telepathy, astral projection, telekinetic. Okay, that makes sense. Flight, immortality. He's got immortality? Dimensional top Yeah, you can do that. Time manipulation? You didn't say. Contradiction and mole molecular manipulation. That's some subatomic shit. With the flames of Faltine, launch energy shots called the Bolts of Balthak. You hear say Balthak? Knock out foes with the mists of Morpheus. And shield himself using the seven rings of Ragador. Ah. Dormammu. Abracadabra! Everybody loves that one! Other techniques of his include illusions, hypnotism, protective force fields, telekinesis, immortality, time manipulation, power stealing, teleportation, dimensional travel, transmutation, spell nullification. And he can turn himself into a ghost! Ooh. That's his astral form, a projection of Strange's soul separate from his body, which defies the laws of physics. Look, Wiz, huh. he can go through walls and fly around. That's a ghost. To invoke these spells, Strange audibly calls upon the powers of the Vishanti, three godly beings of enormous power. Oh, that one's a kitty. I summon four the shielding powers of the Vishanti. 
Wait, the Olympians as well? Anyway, after many years of study, Strange's mentor was slain by a creepy hentai monster, and Strange was granted the title of Sorcerer Supreme, which is like a normal sorcerer with all the toppings. As Sorcerer Supreme, Strange was deemed the most powerful magic user and defender of the world. To I'm just gonna keep doing that position. Duties, he carries numerous magical artifacts which assist him in battle. The Cloak of Levitation lets him fly without magic. Okay, going through how this actually works. I, Vagamoto, as it says right here, detects truths and tracks magic, so it's not going to be Time Stone. Cloak of Levitation, we all seen it. Enables flight, animated, and, and is animated and intelligent. Orb of Agamotto, used to observe events and ensnares enemies. Book of Ashanti, so that's all the gods that he draws power from. Hmm. Uh, contains every known spell and counter spell. Acts of not saying that can affect magical creatures. Wand of a tomb. He actually has a wand. And someone just got home. I suppose resist opposing magic. Cool. Mind of its own, like Aladdin's magic carpet, but way more stylish. The wand of Watum amplifies his powers, and the acts of anger or whatever cuts through mystical beings. Fun hmm. fact, Strange found that axe in my ex-wife's old witch cave. I mean apartment. But most versatile of all is the Eye of Agamotto. With this amulet, Strange can perceive any truth, absorb massive amounts of energy, enhance his psychic powers, and fire a light that can weaken and obliterate magic. Okay, yeah. If you haven't noticed, Doctor Strange is super powerful. With all this magical mumbo jumbo, he's taken on some of the biggest threats in the universe. Set me free! Now, I've come to bargain. And if he ever gets stuck, he basically just rewrites the rules of reality, which is probably what happens when you divide by zero. That's not even possible. Exactly! It's magic whiz! Anything can happen! Strange's astral form has traveled across the planet in, quote, precious seconds, putting him at several million miles per hour. Even better, when Adam Warlock once used an infinity gem to banish Strange to the far reaches of the universe, Strange just cast a spell that zoomed him all the way back. <laughs> F you, Adam. Given what we see here, Doctor Strange was most likely sent to a void or a large empty area between galaxies. The void where right. our galaxy resides is about 2 billion light years in diameter, Jeez. with the Milky Way set relatively close to the center. Based okay. on this conversation here, we can assume a generously short time frame of 5 seconds. So, Strange must have moved over 4.2 septillion miles per hour. That's six quadrillion times the speed of light. Damn! How about that time he ripped the soul out of his arch nemesis and said- I'm sorry, hold on. Again, I keep pausing because I need to. Stalemated Adam Warlock with the Infinity Gauntlet. Like, Adam was wearing the Infinity Gauntlet. Performed cosmic surgery on eternity. Survived a second Big Bang. Defended his title three times, so people challenged him for Sorcerer Supreme. Fought in a 5,000 year war, defeated Baron Mordo, so, um, I forgot his, I don't know how to say his real name, but, um, the dude that was wearing green in his movie, that, you know, ends up becoming evil, um, the in-betweener Dormammu, and Shumagrath. Really hope I'm saying that last one right, but yeah, he's done some amazing stuff him back in time, or when he restored his cloak of levitation from mere scraps, or when he beat up Galactus and totally scrambled his brain? With his immense magical prowess, Strange has survived blasts from Voltor, a robot with the power to move stars, and even withstood a supernova. At minimum, an exploding star outputs over 350 septillion gigatons of TNT. Jeez. Six octillion times greater than the Tsar Bomba, the most powerful nuclear weapon ever made. Not impressed yet? Well, Strange can manipulate and detonate stars himself. That's right, this guy uses... Wow. Death. Strange is exceptionally clever, and while his physique is not superhuman, it's worth noting that he is a talented athlete and martial artist. This is important, as the use of magic can wear down the magician's body if it is unfit. His immortality has also proved incredibly useful. 
I'll say, he's looking pretty good for a guy born in the 1930s. More than that, at one point Strange was recruited by the Vashanti to fight in a magical war, which lasted 5,000 years. Jeez, that beard. I hope he got some really good veterans benefits after that. But for real, Lord, no, this country doesn't. To protect the universe and reshape it however he wants. I know which doctor I'm calling the next time I'm sick. Who are you? I'm Doctor Strange. Sorcerer Supreme! It's a dope jacket. Tell me, Boomstick, do you believe in fate? I only believe in one thing, Wiz. 18-year, 100-proof whiskey. Well, after accompanying his father on an archaeological expedition in Mesopotamia, 12-year-old Kent Nelson certainly did. Instead of digging up boring old art, founder of the Justice Society, Kent uncovered a 10 billion year old god. Too bad waking him up also gassed Kent's dad to death. This slumbering god. Details, details. A lord of order born from the very beginning of the universe. Nabu the Wise. He normally cares little about the universally inconsequential concerns of individual humans, this time was different. Nabu took the newly orphaned Kent under his wing and taught him the ways of magic. Oh, sweet! I'd take a god dad over an ordinary one any day. But really, I'd just take any dad. Though Nabu wasn't too on the actual parenting part of the deal. So he just magic Kent into a full grown adult over the course of a week. Does that mean he got hit with all those years of awkward puberty all at once? God, this is disturbing. Talk about a mood swing. To master the mystic arts, Nabu granted Kent three ancient relics. Wait, so he did a Billy Batson on it. Don the golden helmet of fate. Well, Kent woke up the physical body, Nabu's soul is actually inside this helmet. So when Kent put it on, his spirit merged with Nabu's and they became Dr. Fate. I am an agent of order. Wait, he's 12. Technically, he can't be a doctor yet, right? Well, in time, he became a trained physician and achieved a PhD in archaeology. Okay. <laughs> So got the Cloak of Destiny, which gave him flight, super strength, and superhuman durability. Lastly, he received the Amulet of Anubis. Love Anubis. Talisman, which increases fate's powers, counters opposing magic, and can launch an ah. intense beam of magical firepower. It also houses its own pocket dimension, where the souls of past Dr. Fates reside. Nymph metal. Not this spirit. Any helmet. And not all of them were duck. I'm not even gonna look at that. And Kent's wife, Inza, got in on the magic action. But Kent is, like, the main one, so we're sticking with him. As Dr. Fate, Kent became the immortal champion of the supernatural Lords of Order. In their fight against This is from Smallville. Of chaos. And he learned tons of wacky wizard skills he can use with just a thought. Perfect for putting chaos gods in their place. Fate can use telekinesis, cast illusions, erect force fields, hypnotize foes, read minds, teleport vast distances, tangibility, astral projection of himself, travel nice. through time and dimensions, and even manipulate matter at a molecular level. Oh, they both can. He's so powerful he can basically do whatever the hell he wants. Like that time he did a Freaky Friday body swap with Blue Beetle like it was nothing. He can even that doesn't seem right. Superman's Kryptonian powers for himself. That's right. This guy can just decide to be Superman for a day. With his yeah, he could. Magic, fate has turned buildings into dust, thrown a planet into a sun, and physically held back the destruction of the universe. The helmet, just the helmet, once flew through space so fast it reached the velocity of God, and then bounced off the edge of the universe. What the hell does that even mean? Fate has regenerated his body from a single thought, withstood hits from the likes of Superman and Ultraman, and somehow survived in a dimension of reality where literally nothing exists. Who the hell is writing this crap? Also, when DC decided to reboot their entire comic line, Fate was one of the only characters to survive the crisis that literally collapsed the multiverse. But I'm sorry, what? Oh, trying to explain fate in the Tower of Fate, making it through Crisis of Infinite Earth. Ah, uh, what? He does 
Gloves have one big weakness. The helmet is Nabu, and Nabu is the source of Fate's powers. So if you remove the helmet, he loses his magic. For the most part, Kent does possess some magical ability of his own, like telekinesis and super strength, but he's not even remotely close to the potential of Dr. Fate. And even further from the true fate. When the souls of a man, a woman, and a god come together, in this case Kent, Inza, and Nabu, they create Dr. Fate's ultimate state of being, an entity with enough power to rip the universe apart and effortlessly overpower other lords of order and chaos. Sadly, like all menage a trois scenarios, keeping this going for too long could destroy all three of them. So fate doesn't go final form unless he absolutely has to. Still, the people of the cosmos can sleep easy knowing fate is on their side. Your fate is utterly binding. Who are you? Well, let me show you, my friend. Smallville was before the, our time, uh, or ahead of its time. This debate once and for all. But first, I'll teach you how to be a wizard in the kitchen. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and skip this. Uh, I really want to try Blue Apron though, especially when I move out. Does he just all the time just like? Stephen Strange. It has come to my attention that there are two Sorcerer Supremes in this existence. I am here to resolve this embarrassment. I see somebody needs a lesson in manners. Let's go. Pitiful. Taste the flames of the Fontaine! <laughs> How's that for embarrassment? Fool, you are merely a doctor. I am a god. Not wrong. We busting through reality itself. This is April. Jesus. Sorry, what was that? <laughs> Sorry, did we actually just go through? gonna sit back on this one. Oh, uh, what happened to the cloak? Are we... I understand your power now. Are we on a dragon? Eh. There we go. So the god is just a man in disguise. Yep. Let's see how you fare with him. Jesus Christ, Strange, stop talking. Oshka, grab me the crimson bag, the Cinerac! Friend once told me the helmet doesn't make the man. But I will use it! Oddly animated. Oh, it just looked weird to me right there. Witness your true fate! Wait, don't you have to find Enza? Ah, crap baskets. I can't stop you here. Maybe... in there? Welcome to my home. 
just get out of there and okay. Yeah. Why does that look familiar? KO! So, uh, don't doctors take an oath to never take a life or whatever? Yes. Analyzing this matchup was bizarre. You might even say it was strange. Strange? Save the puns, Wiz. That's my job. But yeah, both these doctor wizards were so stupidly powerful, trying to find their limit was like looking for a needle in a haystack. But nobody remembered to put the needle there in the first place. With their maximum potential seemingly unmeasurable, it's easy to make an argument for either one to win. If given the chance, Strange could have certainly, say, stolen Fate's powers, or maybe even just willed him out of existence. I bet plenty of Strange fans are letting us know how in the comments below. Yeah. That's fine, but Death Battle looks at the larger picture to find the most likely outcome of them all, and Fate simply held the advantage on a grander scale. I can, I can, I'm okay with that. That was in year war, but Nabu's been around since the beginning of the universe, over 10 billion years. He definitely had way more experience. Fate also had the advantage of casting the majority of his spells non-verbally, while many of Strange's required specific hand movements and incantations. Yeah. Still, it was only a matter of time Still cooler. until the Eye of Agamotto informed Strange of Fate's one weakness. Depowering him wasn't as easy as you'd think. He had his own magic, and his superhuman strength was something Strange didn't have at all. Basically, anything Strange could do, Fate could do too but even more. Remember how Strange cast a spell which moved him six quadrillion times the speed of light? Yep. Now remember how Fate's helmet flew from Earth to the edge of the universe and back? It took about one year to make this trip. Given the estimated scope of the observable and unknown universe, a trip of this magnitude would require the helm to fly nearly 28 decillion times Bonk. the speed of light. That's over four quintillion times faster than Strange. Look at it this way, Strange was a man borrowing the powers of a god, while Fate's a god borrowing a man. Plus, that power boost with Inza's of soul from the amulet put Fate on a level above the gods in his universe, something Strange can't really do himself. Both Doctor Strange and Doctor Fate possessed incomprehensibly impressive magic. Yeah. Fate held more experience, greater physical abilities, and a wider range of talents. Which left Steven stuck with a strange twist of fate. The winner is Dr. Fate. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want exclusive commentary on this episode, click that box. <sighs> what are you barking at? In the description. See you next time. Oh my god, dog. I'm a I'm a cannibal. Reuse back. Versus Jen of Taken. Of Tekken. Oh. Alright, just gonna leave that there. Uh, dang. I didn't really I didn't really want to pick a side. I'm, I'm bummed I would have been bummed that either one lost. But uh that actually makes sense. Strange taking uh his power comes from gods, whereas fate is already a god, but is using a, a mortal body. So that's, yeah, that's, yeah, still awesome though. I, you have to admit that was. Oh, I've been I've been begging for this for like years now. I'm thinking, guys, there's only like two people that we really need to see. I would have loved if this was like you know 3D animated, but that would have been like hell for the animators, especially with all the spells. And this is pretty much just like um, uh, Pokemon Battle Royale. You got Venusaur versus Blastoise versus Charizard. And yes, there is that rock, paper, scissors maneuver where it wasn't going to be specifically one wins. No, either one could have won, but one has a higher percentage than the others. In that case, Blastoise came out on top more often than Charizard or even Venusaur. This is the same way. It's not, you know, 90% versus 10%. This is very close. Like, these guys mess with reality itself, which is insane. Already at 24 minutes. Like, this is probably my longest video. Like, reaction video. But anyways, thank you all for watching. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up. Put in the comment section below any other videos you want me to react to. Till next time, later.